This is a quick overview of liver disease and how to approach it. I've broken it up into two major presentations. One of them is just the asymptomatic uh, liver function test abnormalities. Liver function test is, is a little bit of a misnomer considering that some of these don't really show whether or not the liver is working like uh, AST and ALT are enzymes that are found in the liver but they are not necessarily a measure of the liver's function. Some of these others like albumin and prothrombin time are, are better measures of how well the liver is functioning because the job of the liver is to produce uh, proteins uh, such as albumin and platelets and also to um, detoxify the body. So AST and ALT are, are the ones that you see most commonly. AST is generally elevated more in alcoholic disease and ALT is generally elevated more in uh, viral hepatitis. So we'll talk a little bit more about the different etiologies here. The other way that liver disease is going to show up is with symptoms. And these are probably the, the liver disease patients that are uh, farther along and uh, more serious. There's two main causes for symptoms in liver disease. One is the backup of blood going to the liver. If the liver is not working properly, especially in cirrhosis, either alcoholic or uh, viral cirrhosis, sorry, uh, uh, post-hepatitis uh, cirrhosis, you, uh, you get a backup of blood. This can also happen if you have uh, some kind of blockage in the portal cable system, like in Bud Chiari syndrome. So if the blood is backing up, then you get ascites from uh, from the extra uh, backup pre backup of pressure. Ascites is also related to the uh, decreased liver function that we'll talk about here in a second. And with ascites comes an increased risk for spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. So that's something to keep on your uh, radar if, if you have some kind of a acute abdomen situation. Splenomegaly is associated with this backup of blood. It makes the uh, backs blood up into the spleen and uh, and makes the spleen enlarge. Caput uh, medusae and varices are just a, a function of an increased amount of pressure in the venous system, just as jugular venous distension is. The places that you'll find these varices include um, <laughs> include uh, esophageal varices. That's the big one where you need to be worried about esophageal variceal rupture, where you get uh, hematemesis, and a lot of these people uh, die this way. Hepatorenal syndrome is a function of uh, decreased blood supply to the kidneys, which can end up giving you kidney failure. So the other set of symptoms are related to the fact that the liver is not producing um, proteins like it should and also that it's not clearing toxins like it should. So edema comes from the decreased oncotic pressure that's associated with a lack of albumin. Gynecomastia and spider angiomas, as well as hypogonadism, are all related to the fact that when you have a decreased amount of albumin, you have a, a, a functional decrease in the amount of male hormone or, the, or the, an increase in uh, estrogen. And uh, so you get gynecomastia, you get spider angiomas, and you get hypogonadism. You also can see temporal proximal muscle wasting. I actually don't understand the mechanism of that. Uh, pruritus and jaundice are because of the buildup of uh, bilirubin. 
and uh, hepatic encephalop en encephalopathy and asterixis are also uh, a buildup of toxins that aren't being cleared by the, the liver and uh, bruising uh, spelled b-r-u-i-s-i-n-g and bleeding are uh, are because you don't have enough uh, platelets so when you have either increased LFTs or uh, these uh, signs and symptoms, then you want to take a good history asking about uh, drug or chemical exposure. There's a lot of drugs that can uh, lead to liver damage. I should have included some of those here, but we'll get them on a different video. Sexual activity history is important because uh, hepatitis B is uh, is almost exclusively transferred uh, sexually. Hepatitis C can be in around 10%. IV transfusion history is usually associated with hepatitis C. Anorexia and weight loss are good questions to ask. Uh, ask about abdominal pain, fever, pruritus, GI, stool, urine changes, and CNS complaints. All of those can help lead to an understanding of whether or not people are symptomatic for uh, their liver problems. So when trying to figure out what's going on, this uh, Vindicate mnemonic that, that is used almost universally as a, a differential diagnosis guide works really great here because almost all of these apply. Uh, vascular problems, we talked about Bud Chiari syndrome, can cause damage to the liver infection like hepatitis. Inflammatory um, and autoimmune, there, are, there is an autoimmune hepatitis. There's also primary sclerosing cholangitis, which is most likely an, an autoimmune. And primary biliary cirrhosis is also probably autoimmune. So all these are inflammatory slash autoimmune diseases that can cause liver damage. Neoplasms, uh, hepatorenal carcinoma is an important thing on this differential. And drugs, uh, like I mentioned, we'll, we'll go through the drugs that cause liver damage later on. Uh, iatrogenic, I can't really think of an example there. Congenital, developmental, or inherited. Uh, you can have a primary biliary atresia in, in neonates, uh, as well as anatomic problems. Tra trauma could cause a liver problem, as well as environmental exposure, endocrine, metabolic. So hepatitis, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, uh, often called NASH, just fatty liver. Usually that's going to be associated with with obesity. Cirrhosis, often of alcoholic uh, origin. Uh, hemochromatosis, which of course is a buildup of iron. Cancer, Wilson's disease, a buildup of copper. Primary sclerosing cholangitis, which we mentioned under the autoimmune, as well as primary bilious cirrhosis. Bud Chiari, which we mentioned. Gilbert syndrome is a uh, problem with uh, bilirubin metabolism, which usually is asymptomatic. And Pompe's disease we usually associate with uh, heart problems, but is also a problem with the liver as well. So some of these we can treat by, you know, uh, removing the underlying problem. For example, uh, with Bud Chiari syndrome, sometimes you can do a surgery to provide extra blood supply to the liver. Um, you can manage some of these symptoms, but but ultimately, liver transplant is the only way to really correct the problem. Sulfasalazine is is in uh, experimental trials, in uh, with the possibility of of reversing liver damage, or aiding in the reversal of liver damage. So uh, we'll 
probably see some of that in the future. So thanks to those who provided the images, and please leave us your comments so we can improve these videos. Uh, help us to know if there's information that uh, we should have put in that we didn't, or if there's incorrect information. And uh, again, thanks for